Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. Today is a very interesting video. Today we are diving into the scariest disease in the world, at least in my opinion, and that would be rabies. We're going to, of course, talk about what it is for those of you that maybe have a vague understanding of what it is, but don't really know what it is. And then we're going to look at examples of it, look at what it does to you, what it does to an animal, and watch some videos and clips seeing this played out. I promise we're going to get right into that video. However, today's video is very gratefully supported by a sponsor. So I'm going to roll to that and I will be right back with you. This video is kindly sponsored by Scentbird. For only $17 a month, Scentbird will send you your favorite fragrance and give you a 30-day supply. You know how designer fragrances that you find at the mall and Sephora online even are just ungodly expensive, sometimes hundreds of dollars for a small bottle? Well, with Scentbird, you can get a 30-day supply of that scent for a much more reasonable price, and that way you can try it out and see how much you really like it. And if you're really going through that bottle, then maybe it's a sign that you should buy the full bottle. I just personally like having a wide variety of scents at my disposal to pick from because my mood changes. It also depends on the event that I'm going to. So Scentbird sent me three fragrances that I'm going to show you guys. What a vibe those colors are. So the way these work, you can lock the bottle by just twisting it. You can see what's inside by simply taking off the magnetic case. The first one we have is from Sisley Paris, Azia La Nuit. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I apologize. But this one's, this one is so warm. I can't, I can't describe it. It's like a, it feels like I'm being embraced into this warm, like falling into a pile of warm fall leaves. <laughs> it's so comforting. I love this so much. This next one is from Michael Germain. It's Sugarful Kiss is what it's called. Like I would definitely wear this like going out for coffee during the daytime. And then this one is by Skylar Clean Beauty. It's called Peach Fields. I feel like this one's sexy. I can't, I don't know how else to describe it, but sexy romantic, like definitely good for a date night or something to like attract somebody that you might want to attract. You know, I have to spray this one. I want the room to smell like this one. If you don't know what you want, Scentbird has a quiz to help you select your first vial. They also have over 600 designer brands of both perfume, but also cologne and unisex fragrance. Make sure to use the link below and use my code HORRIBLE for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. I also have exciting news. Scentbird is now available in Canada. So what is rabies? In simple terms, rabies is a virus. It's a viral disease that any mammal is capable of being infected with. And when infected, it will attack the mammal's entire central nervous system. So mammal being either a human or warm-blooded animal, amphibians, frogs, lizards, birds, they cannot get rabies. When most of us think of rabies, I bet when I say that you think of bats, raccoons, maybe foxes, but mammals outside of that can get it. As we know, humans can get it, but farm animals can get it. Literally, the only requirement is to be a mammal. Most commonly, you're infected with rabies from being bitten by a rabid animal. However, it is not discussed as much that you can get it from being scratched. Or if a rabid animal's saliva comes in contact with one of your open wounds. However, since it is relatively rare in humans, especially in developed countries, the odds of you getting it from something other than a bite is probably pretty minuscule. And since the virus is carried through the saliva, the virus is also killed when when the saliva is dried out. So that is a basic definition of rabies. Let's talk about why it's so freaking scary. So the obvious reason that rabies is so terrifying is because once you start showing symptoms, it's almost 100% 
fatal. There's almost a 100% chance that you will die. But in my opinion, that's not even the scariest part. The scariest part about rabies to me is the incubation period. Now, quick anecdote, I had a full on argument with my group of friends about this one time because they told me they were trying to convince me that if you got bitten by something rabid, you would die within days. Rabies made you sick immediately and then you would just die really quickly. And I said, that is not correct. You can be infected with rabies and show absolutely no sign of the disease for weeks, sometimes months. And not to toot my own horn, but I got to smugly win that argument because after looking it up, I was right. And according to the actual CDC, rabies can in fact be dormant after you are bitten by a rabid animal for several weeks after getting bitten up to sometimes several three months. This means that you could go three months after being bitten with absolutely no signs that something is wrong, no symptoms. And like I said, this is called the incubation period. Now, what's also interesting is that you're actually not contagious during this time. If you're not showing symptoms, symptoms, the virus has likely not traveled to the saliva yet, which is what is so contagious. So you can walk around for weeks or months not knowing that you have it, but at least during that time you're not spreading it. However, the reason this disturbs me so very much is because, for example, if you're bitten by a bat, you may not even realize that you've been bitten by the bat. A bat's bite can be the size of a pinprick, if that. Some people may not even realize that they've been bitten. So if you don't realize you've been bitten, you don't think you're at a risk for getting anything from that animal, and then you think you're fine because for the next three to 12 weeks, nothing seems to be wrong. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and you have a fever. Something's wrong and you don't know what. We will get to that later in this video. But it is so disturbing to me that if you don't get proper treatment, that's it you're already dead and you don't even know it. Now, of course, I made this video because rabies in general just really fascinates me. I think it fascinates me because of my morbid curiosity and because it's one of the scariest diseases of our time that will, of course, interest me. But I'm here to do a deep dive on what it does and what it may look like. I don't want to full out fear monger here. I just want to appeal to your probably shared morbid curiosity. So before we get into the really scary stuff and the scary visuals, I do want to put everybody's mind at ease. The reason so few people actually die from rabies, at least in developed countries, if you're in a developed country, which if you're watching my channel, you likely are, the reason is because we have made an absolutely amazing vaccine to prevent people from dying. So if you ever come into contact with a wild animal or an unfamiliar animal that you don't know their vaccination status, or there's any chance whatsoever that they scratched or bit you, just be on the safe side and go to the hospital. Just assume it bit you if there was contact at all and go to the hospital. Because at the hospital, they can prevent you from ever getting infected. Let's talk real briefly about the vaccine. So at the hospital, once you b suspect you might have been infected by a rabid animal, they will give you what is called PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. We aren't going to get too sciencey in this video because I'm definitely no medical expert, but basically they give you a dose of something called human rabies immune globulin, which is an immediate dose of antibodies since your body hasn't had a chance to make them on its own yet. So then they also will give you a dose of inactive, so dead, rabies virus, which will help your body learn how to make antibodies and fight it off. The human rabies immune globulin is only given in one dose, but then the dead rabies virus vaccine is given to you on the first day of infection, then on day three, day seven, and day 14 after infection. If given immediately and given properly, this vaccine is 100% effective at preventing you from contracting rabies. Some people do get pre-exposure treatment. That would be people like veterinarians working with animals all the time, people who handle bats at all as part of their job or on a regular basis. If you travel to a country where rabies may be prevalent, or there are people whose job it is to work in labs 
labs that works with live rabies viruses. And they, of course, are vaccinated very frequently. About 60,000 Americans get this vaccination every year. So that's about 60,000 people that believe they were bitten by a possibly rabid animal each year, though probably not all of them are rabid. It's just a precaution that people do, obviously, as any of us would and should do if you ever suspected that you were bit by something that could be infected. Only about one to three people in America actually get rabies. They don't get vaccinated and they go on to actually become infected with rabies and pass away from it every year. The number is similar. It's very, very rare in Canada and Australia like doesn't have rabies at all. So like I said, any developed countries like that have very few cases. Now, unfortunately, for developing countries, this is not so much the case. Worldwide, about 59,000 people die every year from the rabies virus. A lot of these cases are from various parts of Asia. 20,000 people of these around 59,000 people each year are in India. The issue in India is not bats or raccoons, but dogs, stray dogs and feral dogs. It's now illegal to shoot stray dogs in India and their population has increased a ton over the past few decades. So people in India that like dogs will then feed the dogs that are on the street, which just increases their contact with humans and makes all the stray dogs there more likely to just hang around humans. And then India, because they are developing and there's so many poor areas, they don't have programs in place to catch and release, you know, to catch stray or feral dogs, spay and neuter them, vaccinate them with the rabies vaccine, and then release them back out into the wild again. They could do that too, but even if they do, like our dogs here in America, my dog has to be vaccinated for rabies every three years as a preventative measure. So even if they did do that, like, how would they revaccinate all the dogs? So really, it's a better spay and neuter program that they need over there for this to decrease. So people in India get bitten by stray dogs there all the time, sometimes attacked by a pack of feral dogs that are on the street. And a lot of the time, people don't realize that rabies is even a risk. I don't think the education there is around as much, and it's very impoverished areas that have the feral dog problems to begin with. I read one article about a man who got bit by a feral dog and the wound was really bad, but his family was trying natural remedies and covering it up. And so it didn't get better and he didn't go to the hospital until a week later. And then it was too late. He was already infected with rabies and later passed away. It's just crazy to me that almost 60,000 people do actually die worldwide from this virus every single year, but they make it seem like so few people die. And yeah, it is rare, but that's because most people in developing countries, it's rare or it never happens. Okay, so before we talk about humans, we're going to talk about animals. I know there was a trigger warning at the beginning of this video, but just a warning that this section may have some disturbing clips in it. Mostly animals suspected to be infected with rabies. It's just kind of a sad video to see. So for example, here's a clip of a raccoon that seems to be infected with rabies. It's impossible to know 100% actually because only a lab test on this animal would be able to tell us for sure, but it is exhibiting very similar behaviors. So here's what may happen to an animal that is infected with rabies, foaming at the mouth. This could also just look like very excessive drooling. When we think of rabies, we think about this the most because it's most portrayed in media. You know, think Stephen King's Cujo, stuff like that. Another huge red flag for an animal is if you see an animal that's typically nocturnal or not out during the daylight, and they're just out and about in the middle of the day, I've seen people film raccoons like this or like the clip we just saw. I'm just so scared for them and wondering what, why, why they would approach an animal in broad daylight like this, because it is very obvious that something is wrong with the animal, whether it's rabies or not. Just never approach a wild animal in general is a good rule of thumb. But yeah, if you see a nocturnal animal 
out and about in the middle of the day, that's not a good sign. The other sign is that the animal could be either acting very aggressively. This is, again, how we most often see it portrayed in movies and what we think of when we think of rabies. Again, Cujo being the big evil dog, the animal has turned into the zombie version of themselves. They're attacking you for no reason and they just like seem really, really mean for no reason without being provoked. But interestingly and so weirdly it can also be the opposite they could seem extremely tame the animal could be not afraid of humans even though they should be and the animal won't run away from you even though it typically would it might just seem really relaxed that's also a big red flag the animal could be what they call fly biting which is they're biting at objects that aren't there they're biting randomly at the air and all around them they could have trouble moving parts of them could be paralyzed or they just seem drunk, like they can't walk straight. Or again, if something just doesn't seem right, listen to your instincts. If a bat is on the ground, a bat should never just be chilling on the ground. A bat will never just be hanging out on the ground unless something, rabies or some other disease, has infected it. The animal thing breaks my heart so much because not only are these animals suffering and there's no way to catch them all and put them down because a lot of the time we don't even see them. They're out and they just die by themselves. But it's too bad because not only would this end their misery, but it would also stop the spread to other animals. Okay, so now the main part of this video, let's talk about rabies in humans. A few years ago, a creator by the name of Raw Beauty Christie, many of you have probably heard of her, posted something in 2020 on her Twitter. The tweet read, walking up my stairs at the new house, I hear a loud squeak, look to my right thinking it's a mouse, look on the ground to see a bat screaming at me. I start backing up and he starts crawling at me, squeaking, then takes off cornering me in my closet and I got it all on camera. Now, I remember very specifically because I think I was one of the people that responded to her in this tweet and warned her of rabies. Like, make sure you didn't have any contact and just be mindful that this bat could potentially be infected. And I was not the only one to tweet her that. A lot of people were tweeting at her to be mindful and be careful. And like, if anybody had contact to go get checked out, right? But I remember Christy responding to everybody with a follow-up tweet and it was not a kind tweet. She got extremely defensive and just kind of acted like we were all idiots for thinking that she could possibly be so stupid. Unfortunately, I could not find the tweet. I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. And the way Twitter now X is set up now, it doesn't let you look at that many tweets anymore. And I could not find it. Perhaps she deleted it. I don't know. So I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to take my word on it. I can't remember the exact words of her tweet, but she just replied saying like, I used to work in wildlife. Like, obviously I know that you should never touch a bat or anything like just acting like how could you guys think I would be so stupid she was obviously like very offended that we even thought to warn her of that I got a bad taste in my mouth after that I'm not trying to cancel her by any means and yes I know the controversy going on around her right now that this video is not about that at all. But in this particular incident, I'm not trying to get her canceled or start any beef or anything like that. I can understand her response was a very human response. However, I thought it was just kind of unnecessarily mean to people that were genuinely concerned, genuinely worried that maybe she doesn't know. And maybe if a bunch of people tweeted at her, like, I mean, sorry, we didn't want you to get a 100% fatal disease. The point of me including this in the video at all is the fact that you would be shocked by how many people are not aware. There are so many people that are not aware that bats any wild animal could possibly infect you with rabies. So I'm going to talk about that, but the reason I include that anecdote about Raw Beauty Christie is that it was totally fair of us to be concerned because so many people do not know. For example, these are just a couple of instances that happened near me. I'm sure this happens all the time. So in August of 2017 at Green Lake in Seattle, a group of people relocated a bat on the pathway at Green Lake. The bat later tested 
tested positive for rabies. So I live in the Seattle area. So I, this kind of stuff makes it on the news and I hear about this and it makes it on the news because they want to make sure, I believe they got the group of people that moved the bat. They got them proper care. However, they put it out there because they want to make sure that if anybody else saw the bat or came in contact with the bat before these people moved it, that they go and seek care because obviously if these people knew any better they would not have touched that bat they would have called proper authorities immediately so then in the summer of 2020 in ballard which is also another neighborhood in seattle a witness reported that they saw a woman pick up a bat that was laying on the sidewalk and moved it off to the side with her bare hands. She was trying to move the bat away from harm and she moved it into a bush. Again, I'm positive this woman meant well and was just trying to help the animal and make sure that a dog didn't try to pick it up or something like that. But if this woman was aware of the risk of rabies, I can guarantee she would not have touched a bat. Why the witness didn't go up and tell the woman to go to the hospital. I don't know. I wasn't there. But like we touched on, a non-moving bat laying in the sidewalk in the middle of the day is not a good sign. That is not what bats normally do. And sure enough, the bat was later tested and tested positive for rabies. So they couldn't identify the woman. I, as far as I know, I couldn't see a follow-up where they ever did identify her. So they were just reaching out through the media pleading for whoever that was, if they see this, please go to the hospital and get your vaccines. But it just goes to show you that something seems like very common knowledge to all of us is not common knowledge to everyone. If a human is exposed to rabies and not vaccinated properly or in time, Like I said at the beginning, it could be weeks or even months of nothing seeming wrong. But then you'll feel like you're coming down with the flu, headaches, weakness, and a fever. The side of the bite may be prickly or itchy, but then things will progress. You've become anxious, confused, and maybe even delirious. You're going to be agitated at everything. As the disease gets worse, you're going to start to hallucinate. You'll no longer be able to sleep. You'll likely develop hydrophobia. Hydrophobia is a fear of water, which develops because rabies makes it so you can't swallow anything. And if you try to swallow even water, it's painful and terrible. So you grow a phobia to it. It's also likely because of this, you'll develop anorexia. No one can do much to help you at this point. They can try to make you as comfortable as possible, but medications often don't help with rabies pain. Horrifyingly, you're still awake. You're still aware, even though your brain is completely different. They have to strap you down so you don't hurt yourself 
and don't hurt the staff. They're not going to euthanize you for the same reason we don't euthanize other terminally ill patients. You'll die within maybe two days if you're lucky, but it could take as long as 10. Sir, maybe gay lang po ang gamot. Huh? Huh? Tas ko lang po ah. Okay, po. Now, you might have noticed that throughout this video, I've been saying that it is 100% fatal, but sometimes saying that it's nearly 100% chance of being fatal. And that's because without being vaccinated, a few people have survived being infected with rabies. And I'm going to tell you about the most famous case of that right now. Her name is Gianna GC. I said Gina's name wrong. I'm going to say it Gianna throughout this video. And I am so sorry. It is pronounced Gina and I'm sorry to Gina for saying your name wrong. I apologize. It's Gina, not Gianna. Please ignore my mispronunciation. She's the first known person to have survived being infected with rabies without being vaccinated. Gianna was 15 years old at the time. She was from Wisconsin and she was at church service with her family. It was during the service when Gianna saw a bat flapping around inside the church. It was trapped inside and couldn't get out. The other churchgoers were swatting at it with their hats. Not sure what they thought that would do, but one of them hit the bat with their hat and the bat fell to the floor, stunned. Gianna loved animals and felt sorry for the bat, so she asked her mom if she could carry the bat outside. And her mom said yes. I know we're not even through this story yet, but I know it's really hard not to judge Gianna's mom for just saying, sure, honey, go pick up a wild animal and put it outside. I know I it's taking every I tr I'm trying really hard not to judge because like we've discovered throughout this video, a lot of people do not know the risk of rabies and all they think about is helping the animal. So it's like out of love and kindness. But I know it seems very odd and like it should be common sense. I know. Try to try to get past it. So Gianna picked up the bat and the bat, of course, still screeching and now very terrified because a human just picked it up, bit Gianna on the finger. Gianna said at the time that it was a pinprick sized wound. It was so small, but it was bleeding and it did hurt quite a bit. She did put the bat outside and when they got home, all mom did to the wound she found out that Gianna had been bitten by the bat and they just put antiseptic on it. What's also really bizarre to me about this story is that they told other family and friends what had happened 
and none of them told them to go to the hospital or go see a doctor either. Like that is one thing like mom just seriously not knowing and having a very bad lapse in judgment. But they told other people and other people didn't know either. Nobody suggested that they go get seen. They just were like, oh, that's weird. There was a bat in the church. So Gianna's incubation period has begun as she never went to go get vaccinated. It took three weeks before she woke up feeling very tired, so fatigued. A few days later, Gianna was vomiting and she couldn't get out of bed. She had double vision and then things got worse and she became unresponsive. Her mom did take her to the doctor at this point where she was given a bunch of scans. At first, they were just testing for Lyme disease and meningitis. But after the scans, they were simply sent home. When Gianna continued to get worse, two days later, mom then brought her to the ER. So they go to the ER and this was on a Saturday. And it wasn't until Monday when it occurred to mom to tell one of the doctors that she had been bitten by a bat. I know, again, I am trying really hard to reserve my judgment. It's frustrating. I get it. I just try to remember that nobody could probably be harder on mom than mom was on herself for all of this. I'm sure the guilt she felt was punishment enough, so we don't need to pile on. The doctor's face just went instantly pale, like all the color drained from the doctor's face, and they knew exactly what it was at that point. And the doctor was just like, she probably has rabies, and if she does, she's gonna die. Gianna was rushed to a specialist and by Tuesday, she had tested positive for rabies. So the doctor did his research and was looking for any sort of Hail Mary. And they implemented a very controversial treatment that is now called the Milwaukee Protocol. Milwaukee is a city in Wisconsin where this doctor was, so it fit. Now, obviously, Gianna was going to die no matter what, so the parents had nothing to lose. They said, yeah, go ahead. Gianna doesn't even know what's happening. She said she didn't even remember any of this after she got really sick. She didn't even remember what was going on. So for the Milwaukee protocol, they put Gianna into a coma, in a forced coma, to stop her brain function, which would allow her body more time to fight. So this kind of like paused the illness. They then administer a ton of antiviral drugs along with ketamine and amantadine. The idea is that since the rabies eventually attacks your brain and that is what kills you, putting the patient into the coma will kind of pause the rabies and if you give them antivirals it will allow your body more time to fight the infection before it goes to the brain and kills you like gives it more time to be fought in the body before it goes to the more crucial areas however it seemed to work Gianna was hospitalized for a total of 11 weeks and she couldn't talk or move when she woke up. It took her years of physical therapy afterwards to learn how to talk, walk, and function again. But she survived rabies and went on to live a fairly normal life, like she's a mom now. However, I said earlier that this is a controversial protocol, a controversial treatment, and that's because there is still not a cure for rabies. It's kind of hotly debated in the medical community whether the Milwaukee protocol actually worked? Did it actually cure Gianna's rabies? Or is it just that there is a couple random weird anomaly people out there that are able to fight off rabies, that their body is able to fight it off? Just like some of us don't get norovirus. Like there's a percentage of the population that just doesn't get it. They're just not susceptible to it. Or the way COVID affects us all so differently. Some people get very, very ill. Some people have very light symptoms. Is it something like that? But since rabies is so rare, it's not studied enough to know what kind of person is able to just fight it off naturally. The reason we don't know if the Milwaukee protocol is actually effective is because it's been attempted on other people. By about 2018, around 35 patients that were not vaccinated that then went on to contract rabies were given the Milwaukee protocol and only three of those 35 patients I believe including Gianna actually survived so even with the protocol 
your chances of dying are still pretty high. It's really hard to know how many people in history overall have ever survived rabies after being infected and not being vaccinated. One source I read said that about 30 people overall, like worldwide, have not died after being infected with rabies. But like I said, it varies from source to source. It could be way lower than that. Regardless, it is enough for us to say that it is almost certainly fatal, not 100% fatal. But regardless, it's a very interesting case of how a very young girl, she was only 15, straight up survives rabies and was not a vegetable afterwards, went on to live a pretty normal life. Do you guys remember that episode of Scrubs? That episode where they have three patients that desperately need some kind of organ transplant and that blonde character named Jill from earlier in the series returns. She then passes away suddenly in their hospital and Dr. Cox and JD are so excited because she was an organ donor. So they think they saved all the patient's lives because they're able to take her organs and give these three patients transplants. But suddenly everything goes south. They lose all three patients instead very quickly. Yeah, the big reveal at the end of the episode was that Jill was infected with rabies, but she wasn't showing any obvious symptoms and that it's so rare they wouldn't test for that before doing a transplant. And if you were like me watching Scrubs during that time, that episode was shocking and absolutely devastating. Well, did you know that that particular Scrubs episode, like so many other Scrubs episodes, was actually based on a true medical case? In Atlanta, Georgia, in 2004, three patients really did die from getting rabies after getting a transplant from an infected person. There were four patients that got a transplant overall, but sadly, the person getting the lung transplant died during the operation. However, there was three other patients. Two of them were kidney transplants. They only needed one kidney, and then the other one was a liver transplant. They all got these operations on May 4th, and all three of those patients had passed away by like June 21st. They did actually get that part right in scrubs. They don't test for rabies before doing an organ transplant. It's so rare and they don't have a lot of time. Once the donor passes away, they only have a matter of hours to do the transplant. So like JD says in the show, it would have been irresponsible for Dr. Cox to test the patient for something so rare. Like he said, it was time they didn't have. So in the end, Dr. Cox really did nothing wrong in that situation. He did everything a responsible doctor in real life would do. What happened in the real life case, why they got it wrong, the donor was having symptoms. The donor had a low grade fever, but also a change in their mental state. However, after scans and tests, they found a brain hemorrhage in his brain. So they thought that the symptoms were just from that. It would make perfect sense. But as it turns out, that donor had also been infected with rabies and the people that tested his body believe that he was infected by a bat. All right, guys, that is where our rabies deep dive is going to end. Please like the video just to support the channel. Please also check out our sponsor. The links will be right below this video. Check out Scentbird. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much to all of our patrons for supporting the channel as well. Our top tiers are Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Momo Neon, Marita 144, Sage K, Elderly Hipster, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Toby, Carter, Comic-Con Anime and Gaming Convention, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Maxie, Ellison Luna, Tiny Mighty Bookworm, A Bunny Apparently, Leon Vanek, Elliot Fink, I Am In Your Walls, Habomania, Cyberdog Investigations, LLC, Vicky Cat, Amy B, Tick Urch, Dead Without the E, Ball, Olive Zilla, Chara, MH Dave, Ami, Lindsay R, Miss T, Lou Raccoon, Shanna R, O Magnificoco, Victor Schmiel, Laura Winter, Lilith, Dana, Ashes, Arsic Ghost, Gosh Zilla, Gabriella L, Aria Anomaly, Ghosty Girl, and Mel Miller.